Hello again, everyone. It's me again, Mrs. Coxon, and I'm going to take you through today's maths lesson. So for this lesson, you are going to need some need six small things that are the same. So it could be six sweets or six pieces of pasta or six buttons, whatever you've got at home. So you can pause your video now so that you can go and get these. And uh, when you've got done that, come back and join us. Great. Did you find some things to use? Just put those to one side. So we're going to start by seeing how you got on with the, the task that I set you at the last lesson. Was it a bit tricky? I bet you managed it fine. Let's go through the first one together. So here we can see that five eighths of the whole set and five of those parts are shown here. So that represents five eighths of the whole. So this also tells us that the whole set must be made up of eight parts, which is eight eighths. So let's use what we know to find out what one eighth is. The whole set is made up of eight equal parts and one of those parts represents one eighth of the whole. So can you see how the unit fraction has come from the whole? This star down here at the bottom is one eighth of the whole set. Well done, did you get that? Fantastic. OK, let's try the next one. A little bit trickier this time. So here we can see that's two thirds of the whole set. We asked you to find what one third of the set is. First, let's think about our whole set. Now we can see that the whole is made up of three equal parts and three of those parts is three thirds of the set. Did you manage to draw one third? Let's use our stem sentence to help. The whole is made up of three equal parts and one of those parts is ringed and that is one third of the whole. So we can see how that is, is there at the bottom. Again, can you see where the unit fraction has come from? It's come as part of that whole. Well done if you got that one. And the final question. Here you were shown two thirds of a ribbon. Did you manage to draw one third? Let's see. So the whole is made up of three equal parts. We have three thirds and one of those parts is ringed and that is one third of the whole. Fantastic if you got that. Look again carefully to see where that third has come from. Brilliant, well done. We're time to move on with our learning now. OK, here I have a packet of sweets which I've opened and here they are on my screen. I have how many sweets are in my whole pack? That's right, we've got six sweets in my whole pack. Now I'm going to split my sweets into equal parts. I want you to have a think about what fraction of the whole is each sweet. What fraction of the whole pack is each sweet? That's right. Each sweet is one sixth of the whole. So we have split our whole into six equal parts. So our unit fraction is one sixth of the whole. So let's count the parts and you can join in with me. So you can line up your, your sweets or your buttons or your pasta pieces like mine on the screen and you might even want to draw six boxes like I have so that you can place your sweets inside. Are you ready to count? Okay, here we go. One one sixth, two one sixth, three one sixth, four one sixth, five one sixth, six one sixth. Fabulous, well done. OK, you can take your sweets out of your boxes again now. And now we're going to have a go at dividing our pack of sweets or dividing our whole in different ways. So first, can you use your six small things, your six sweets, six pieces of pasta, six buttons, whatever you have? Can you use them to make three one six? Here we go. And here's how we write three six. So that's three one six, which is the same as three six. We can say it both ways. OK, now, can you make four one six? Super well done. And finally, I want you to make six one six or six six. 
Hmm, that's interesting. I want you to have a think about 616. Is there anything that you notice? That's right, 616 is the whole pack, the whole packet of sweets. We have all of the parts. Let's have a closer look. OK, are you ready to count with me? Here we go. 116, 216, 316, 416, 516, 616. We have all of the parts. So what do you notice about the numerator and the denominator? Can you see it? That's right, the numerator and the denominator are the same. So the whole has been divided into six equal parts and we have all six of those parts. So we have the whole. 616 or 66 is the same as the whole. We have the whole pack of sweets. So let's look at another example together now. Here my whole has been divided into five equal parts. So each part is, that's right, one fifth. The unit fraction is one fifth. Are you ready to count with me? Here we go. One one fifth, two one fifths, three one fifths, four one fifths, five one fifths. So our whole has been divided into five equal parts. Each part is one fifth. And here on our last bar, we have all of the parts. What do you notice about five fifths? Have a look at the denominator and the numerator. Can you see it? That's right, the denominator and the numerator are the same. Okay, I've got a different diagram for you now. Let's have a look at this shape. How many equal parts can you see all together? That's right, there are nine. So can you say my stem sentence with me? We have split our whole into nine equal parts. So our unit fraction is one ninth. Well done. Let's count together. So we're going to count each part using our unit fractions. So here we go. One one ninth, two one ninths, three one ninths, four one ninths, five one ninths, six one ninths, seven one ninths, eight one ninths, nine one ninths. And how many parts of them make the whole? That's right, nine one ninths, all nine parts make the whole. Well done. So we have all of the nine parts together, nine ninths is the same as the whole. Let's say that together because that's really important. When we have all of the parts, we have the whole. Nine ninths is equal to the whole. Well done. So I've got an egg box now. And can you be thinking what our unit fraction is? Let's stay our, say our stem sentence together. And this time I'm not going to reveal the answers for you. So we're having a think. We have split our whole into 12 equal parts. So our unit fraction is 1 twelfth. So let's count now in 1 twelfth. 1 1 twelfth, 2 1 twelfth, 3 1 twelfth, 4 1 twelfth, 5 1 twelfth, 6 1 twelfth, 7 1 twelfth, 8 1 twelfth, 9 1 twelfth, 10 1 twelfth, 11 1 twelfth, 12 1 twelfth. And we have all 12 twelfths, the whole egg box is full. So we have one whole egg box full of eggs, which makes our whole. So 12 1 twelfths is equivalent to the whole. So if we look back at each of our examples again, what do you notice about the numerators and the denominators? 
What do you think we can say about this? Hmm. When the numerator and the denominator are the same, the fraction is equivalent to one whole. Let's say that together, say it with me. When the numerator and the denominator are the same, the fraction is equivalent to one whole. Well done if you joined in there. If the whole is divided into five equal parts, then five of those parts make the whole. If the whole is divided into nine equal parts, then nine of those parts make the whole. And if the whole is divided into 12 equal parts, then 12 of those parts make the whole. Let's try one more. What if the whole is divided into 269 equal parts? That's right, 269 of those parts make the whole. Well done if you joined in there. Now, I think we've discovered something really important here when the numerator and denominator are the same. So let's see if we can apply this new learning to what I have here. So I've got some fractions, but the numerators are missing. Let's use our stem sentence each time and see if we can fill in the missing numerators to make the fractions equivalent to a whole. So let's take the first one. If the whole is divided into 15 parts, then 15 of those parts make the whole. Let's try the next one. If the whole is divided into 49 parts, then 49 of those parts make the whole. If the whole is divided into six equal parts, then six of those parts make the whole. And the last one, if the whole is divided into two equal parts, then two of those parts make the whole. It's fantastic. You've done really well at thinking about what happens when the numerator and the denominator are the same. So when the numerator and the denominator are the same, the fraction is equivalent to one whole. That's going to really help us with our, our learning of fractions. And you might want to write that down somewhere so that you can come back to it. Well, it's almost time to finish, but I'm going to leave you with this task for you to complete before the next lesson. Let's have a quick look at what you'll need to do. What do you notice? That's right, we have our denominators, but all our numerators are missing. All these fractions have missing numerators. So in the first column, you will need to write a unit fraction with these denominators. So that's a bit of a breeze, I'm sure. In the second column, I want you to think of a fraction with these denominators that is quite a small part of the whole. So here we have 18th, 18 as our denominator. So I think a small part of the whole could be 3 18ths. Okay, a bit of a clue there for that one. The next column is a fraction that is a large part of the whole. And finally, in the last column, I want you to think about today's learning that we've been that really important learning we've done today. And I want you to write a numerator so that your fraction is equivalent to the whole. You got that? Excellent. So well done for today. And it's time for me to say goodbye now. So take care. Bye bye.